Hello, let us continue our discussion on variances. In the last chapter, we learned to analyze direct manufacturing costs like material and labor. In this chapter, we will try to calculate variances for manufacturing overhead costs. Remember, we talked about manufacturing overheads before. They are the costs of manufacturing that did not fit into material and labor category. We can break them into variable and fixed manufacturing overhead costs. Variable overhead costs are those that move with something, either number of units produced or number of machine hours or labor hours. Examples are electricity bill, maintenance and repairs of machines. Fixed overheads are those that don't change with number of units produced and are typically cost for a period. Examples can be rent or leasing costs. Do you remember the overhead allocation rate we learned in our job costing chapter? We calculate this rate by dividing the manufacturing overhead dollars by budgeted manufacturing, sorry, by budgeting allocation base. In this chapter, we will learn to carefully choose our manufacturing overhead driver, otherwise cost, overhead cost would be under allocated or over allocated. We will learn to, to uh, calculate two variances each for variable and, and fixed costs. The variable overhead variances are called spending and efficiency variance and are calculated exactly the same way as the two variances for material and labor. Fixed overhead cost variances are called spending and production volume variance and have a slightly different interpretation since fixed costs cannot be expressed on a per unit basis. So here we have the model for variable overhead variances. Notice that the model is exactly the same as for material and labor variances. If you can translate actual quantity as actual hours and actual price as actual rate, then we don't have to actually change anything in the model. Second thing to note is that the first variance is called spending variance instead of price variance or rate variance. But the idea is the same. We are trying to compare what we actually spend with what, what we were allowed to spend. The second variance is called efficiency variance as before since it compares how efficiently we used our input usually direct labor hours or machine hours. The total of the two variances is called flexible budget variance. Remember flexible budget amount is the amount in the middle of the model on the top. Flexible budget variance is the amount which is either the total of the two variances or the difference between number one and number three on the top. So be careful. So here we have a simple problem on variable overhead variances. We are given actual and budgeted production machine hours, which is, the, which, which is our allocation base and variable overhead rate for machine hour. Let us start with a simple question. What is the actual cost of variable overhead? It should be cost for cost per hour times the number of hours actually used. So that should be fairly easy. You get it? The second question asks, what is the flexible budget amount? Remember, flexible budget needs standard input quantity allowed for actual number of units. So we are told that the budget allows 9,000 hours to be used for 18,000 units. So, how many hours would be allowed for 16,000 units already made? In other words, if we actually had a crystal ball and could see into the future, then we would have made a budget for 16,000 units exactly. Then, how many hours would be budgeted? It seems that the company budgets half an hour for each unit made, 9,000 hours for 18,000 units. So, for 16,000 units, 8,000 hours should be allowed. 16,000 units times half an hour for each unit. Now we have total standard input quantity allowed for actual output of 16,000 units. You get it? We can now multiply it by the budgeted price of 3150 to get the amount that would appear in flexible budget column. Let us see some more. However, note that you have, you need the four numbers needed to do all the variance calculations. So, we have actual quantity, actual price, SQ star, which is our standard quantity, and SP or standard rate, all are present. Now we can jump in. 
I just copied the four variance, uh, four calculation number requ numbers required here from the previous slide for easy reference. Here, we need to calculate variable overhead spending variance, which is the same as price or rate variance. Spending variance compares actual rate and standard rate inside the bracket and multiplies by actual input quantity or hours in this case. So we plug in the numbers and we have 3937.50 favorable. Favorable because the rate paid is lower than the budgeted rate. The second question is for efficiency variance. Here we are going to need standard input quantity for actual output. So as we calculated before, standard input quantity or SQ star is half an hour for each unit. So for 16,000 units, it would be 8,000 hours. Now we can get the variance easily. You can decide which way you are more comfortable. You can convert the standard SQ star into a per unit number by dividing total hours in the budget into total budgeted units and then apply it to actual units or you can go in one step and plug in the whole equation of hours divided by budgeted units times actual units. In either case, the number would be the same. The last question is about total variable overhead variance. There are two ways of looking at it. One, that total variance is the difference between actual numbers and flexible numbers, meaning number one in your model and number three on the right side on your model. So left side and right, leftmost side and rightmost side is what we are comparing here. The other way to see this is to realize that the total variance is just the sum of spending and efficiency variance. So you can actually calculate it directly or you can check to see that 3937.50 F for spending variance plus the same for efficiency variance will give you 7875 F which is exactly what we calculated here. I hope you get it. Let us look at fixed overhead variances now. Here I have tried to keep the model as close to the previous one as possible even though actual cost is typically given as total cost incurred but it can be broken into actual hours and actual rate if the number of actual hours are given. The middle top row has fixed cost from static or flexible budget which is based on denominator hours multiplied by budgeted or standard rate. Denominator hours are the hours given to us in the static budget and are considered to be company's best choice for the budgeted output. Finally, we have applied overhead in the rightmost corner of the top row. Many companies use standard hours allowed for actual output for calculating applied overhead. Remember, we need to calculate SQ star or standard hours allowed for actual output to get to the applied overhead amount. The spending variance is just the difference between actual cost and static budget amount, which happens to be the same as the flexible budget amount. Note that we have denominator hours times standard rate used for flexible budget. Denominator hours are the hours company planned in the static budget, but for a different level of output. Since fixed cost is insensitive to the number of units produced, denominator hours do not change into actual hours for flexible budget. It is only for the fixed cost variances that we use denominator quantity rather than actual quantity. For production volume variance, we have a very carefully calculated standard input quantity allowed for actual output or our SQ star and we have tried to keep roughly the same formula we have used for efficiency variance with denominator hours used instead of actual hours. Finally, the total flexible variance is just the difference between number one and number three, that is actual cost incurred minus applied overhead. So here we have a basic problem for all the fixed overhead calculations. We are given actual and budgeted numbers. But before we start solving any problem, we can try to get to the numbers needed to solve the problem. So what do we need? We need actual hours, actual rate, standard hours, standard rate, and one more thing called denominator hours from our static budget, which we did not use in any other equation, in any other variance, but we need it for fixed overhead variance calculations. So denominator hours are the number, give, are the hours given in our static budget, and that number is easy to find. So that number is given in the static budget. Now we can calculate standard hours or SQ star 
by converting static budget numbers into a per unit SQ star. We have 6000 hours for 24000 units, so 0.25 hour for each unit. Makes sense? Now we multiply it by actual units produced to get the total SQ star quantity. Actual hours are given to us at 6100 hours. We can get actual rate by dividing total cost by number of actual hours. Lastly, we need standard rate used in the static budget. We can get that by dividing total manufacturing overhead by total hours budgeted and get a rate of $20 an hour. Remember that we are talking about fixed overhead, so it is kind of unfair to force a rate per hour, but it is a rough way to express what the company's budgeted rate must have been. Here, I put in all the numbers of our problem into the model for an easy overall view. On the leftmost top side, we have actual cost incurred, which is actual hours times actual rate. Then in the middle, we have denominator hours times standard rate, which is the same thing as flexible budget. Be careful, flexible budget shows up in the middle in the fixed overhead model, but usually shows up as a rightmost number in most other variance models. So be careful. Finally, on the topmost right side, we have standard hour star or our SQ star times standard rate. Now, the rest is easy. Spending variance is equal to 3000 U and production volume variance is equal to 5000 F. Finally, total flexible budget variance is 2000 F. You can verify that spending variance plus production volume variance is equal to the flexible budget variance. Other possible questions on this model? What is the amount in the flexible budget? That amount is $120,000. One more. What is the amount in applied overhead? The amount in applied overhead is $125,000. Are you good? Let us look at a couple more problems before we go. Here you are given budgeted units of 40,000, SQ star of half an hour per unit, total budgeted overhead of $440,000. Actual units, actual input quantity, and actual rates are also given. Let us try to stack them together before we solve the equation. So what is our actual quantity? Actual quantity is actual hours of 19,000. Actual rate is $20 an hour. Standard quantity or SQ star is half an hour times 36,000 units actually made, so 18,000 hours. You get it? Then we have, we need standard rate. What is the standard rate? It's the same thing as budgeted overhead rate. So we take the budgeted overhead dollars of 440,000 and divide it by budgeted hours of 20,000 hours. Why, how did we get 20,000 hours? Remember, we have 40,000 units made for which half an hour each is allowed. So 40,000 units must have been allowed a total of 20,000 machine hours. That's how we get 20,000. So 440,000 divided by 20,000 will give us $22 per hour. The rest is easy. I hope you are fine with it now. So notice that we have a spending variance of $38,000 favorable and an efficiency variance of $22,000 unfavorable. You can try to calculate the flexible budget variance to verify that the total of the two is going to come out to be equal to flexible budget variance. Finally, we have a question on fixed overhead variances. You are given budgeted manufacturing overhead of $720,000, budgeted hours of $240,000, and budgeted production of $480,000 unit. Actual units and actual cost incurred is given too. Notice that actual units are only $42,000 as opposed to $480,000. Sounds like a lot. But the tricky thing here is that the budgeted numbers are given for the whole year, but the actual numbers are given only for one month. So we can first convert all the budgeted numbers into a monthly number by dividing all of them by 12. So 480,000 units for 12 months would mean 40,000 units per month, 480 divided by 12. Similarly, 
hours allowed would be 240,000 divided by 12, meaning 20,000 hours. Finally, $720,000 for 12 months would mean $60,000 for each month. Now, we can calculate the relevant numbers too. What are the relevant numbers we need? We need the fixed overhead rate for 2011, which would be fixed manufacturing overheads, fixed budgeted manufacturing overheads divided by budgeted hours, just like our budgeted manufacturing overhead rate. That's fairly easy. It is 700 and <coughs> excuse me. It is 720,000 divided by 240,000 equal to three dollars an hour. Or if you have gone monthly, then it is 60,000 for the month divided by 20,000 hours for the month is equal to three dollars an hour. Same thing. Next, we need spending variance, which is the actual cost incurred minus the amount in the static budget. Please be clever here. We need static budget dollar, am <coughs> dollar amount, but only for a month. So don't be in a hurry to put in 720,000, but first divide it by 12 and then put in 60,000. Now say 63,000, which is the actual number and 60,000, which is the budgeted number kind of sound in the same ballpark. So now we have 3,000 unfavorable for this variance. Finally, we need production volume variance for the month. For that, we would need SQ star multiplied by standard rate. SQ star is number of hours allowed for actual units produced. We are allowed 240,000 hours for 480,000 units or half an hour for each unit. So for 400 and so I'm sorry, for 42,000 actual units, 21,000 hours will be allowed. Are you with me? Next, what is the standard rate? We calculated it already. It was $3 an hour. Now, if we can put in 20,000 hours versus 21,000 hours multiplied by 3, you will get a production volume variance of 3,000 favorable. Again, you can total the two variances and calculate the total variance to see that the total comes out to be the same. I think we are done. Happy solving.